Hi, I'm just doing a uh, showing a customer how to do a calendar. He's got a query on it, so I'm going to see what work he's done. So I'm going to look at. I've logged into him. I've impersonated him. I'm going to go into his calendar designs to see where he's up to on that. I'm accessing this from a 4G connection just to show you it works really well in the in, in uh, on on mobile connections as well. So this isn't a fast broadband or a lease line like I've got at home. I'm on my laptop on my phone, uh, connecting. So uh, with a with a hard disk that's running out of space. Uh, the so he's I, I I can see that his design project there. So I'm going to continue. I've gone to my design his design project. So I'm going to continue editing it. It'll launch the designer into the background of my browser. That takes even on a three G four G connection doesn't take long to do as you saw there. Right. Okay. So I'm looking at where he's got to. On there, we'll have a we'll have a tinker with that. But one of his queries was on page three. He was a problem deleting a photo. So, right. So I need to see what he's done and where he's gone to. Let's have a look here. See where we're at. Uh, so the tabs at the top. You've got photos are on the left. Backgrounds are on the right. If you want to put backgrounds, which is more for school yearbooks and things like that. Layouts and clip art. Uh, these are more tabs used in things like when you create photo books and yearbooks, but they are accessible and usable by the calendars. So I'm going to see what he's done. He's only uploaded two photos so far, uh, and I can see there's nothing in this photo box. Okay, and he's trying to obviously move that from edge to edge, or perhaps crop it or phot photograph it. And on page one, he's got a photo in there, but there's an there's right. Okay, I can see what's happened. Basically, he can't get to his photo because the because the background, because if you get, if we go to another page, I've set up there a background box just as a random box, which you can resize if you so wish to do, uh, and I've set up a a background of an image, which a background image of the calendar block. If you double click on that, hopefully you've got the options you can move that to the back. So if you can't get your photograph for any reason, double click on your uh, calendar month, move the calendar month to the back. And then it'll be the back image. So when we go to here, if I double click on that, I'm going to move it to the back, which means I'll then be able to get to my to my image. Okay. He can drop in his image into a into a into a photo box. He can resize it if he so wishes. Obviously, you've got a bleed line. So if you're running edge to edge photos, so like I'm doing here, I you need to run to the you run need to run the bleed lines. We need three millimeter bleed to trip uh, to cut and trim. Now, if I click on the image once without double, if I double click on it, I get a selection box doing lots of fancy things. So I can do effects and boxes and colors and bring to front and bring to back and everything like that. But if I but if I click on the image once, then hold the shift key down, I can then drag my image left and right or accordingly to do it. If I want to enlarge the image, so I'm now dragging that because I think he's probably going to want. I don't know if he if he wants his peninsula there, he's there, or does he want his does he want the buildings in there? So he's got the option of doing that. He might want to enlarge it. So I double click on it, and he might want to enlarge that photo to get. Then I can then I'm clicking it once, hold the shift key down to drag the image into place within that enlarge box. Okay, it's another thing he could do. He might therefore he might decide that he doesn't want it edge to edge, and he wants to. I this is a visual guide here. There's a visual guide at the top showing you where the calendar spirals are. So we advise, you know, obviously you want to come in as obviously a thumb cut. So you're, if you're not going edge to edge, you'd probably want your image out of the thumb cut and round about the margin guide for this particular calendar. Uh, so it looks funky. So if I'm double clicking there, whoops. So I click on the image, hold the shift key down, and then my image, I can drag my, move my image around within the box. So obviously, I don't know this particular. I don't know what Ed's exact queries were. He was having the problem. Of, did, he said deleting a photograph. So it says here that his photograph's been used twice. So I wonder if he's accidentally. Yeah, he might have accidentally. Yeah. When I. On my designs, you, and you can move the background months if you so wish. It's generally a design like this will be edge to will be an edge to edge image. So if you, the way I've set up my template, 
if the background it's a, in the background clip art of January will be in edge to edge. If I drag that bit of the 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 PDF background to the edge of the page, you'll be back into the position where I've started. You can edit that, you can change that, and you could lower it slightly if you wanted your photo to be longer. Uh, you can do all sorts of things that you want to do. Uh, I'll, I'll move it back for Ed there. So there we go. So so, and if I so again, I'm double clicking it. I'm moving it to the back so I can then get to this image. He has nothing in between, so I'm a bit perplexed. Of, oh yes, there'll be an image on the front cover, won't there? So we've now got three images on. So he's used the same image on the front cover. Uh, we'd need to do some front cover work with him there. But also, when your calendars are provided, if Ed had submitted the calendar like this, I, I'm a graphic designer. We're a graphic we're a graphic design company as well as a print company. We're a family run company in Suffolk. I've been doing graphic design 25 years. I will. Garify it. My name's Gary. I own the company. You have to be talking to the right person. So I would garify that image before sending it to him, so that customers get the covers, especially the covers, as good as they they can be. So I, and I let them know if I've edited their images. And you and when you purchase it, you get a high resolution PDF proof from us anyway before going before going to print. So I don't know what Ed's exact query is, but if I was designing this, I would do one of two things. I'd either go make all my photos edge to edge. Uh, so therefore, and if you want to control that exactly, I can double click on the image. I can bring up the box to the right, which is a dialog box, and I can give every say, I can make sure it's a minus three, minus threes for the bleeds. Uh, and I could say, make sure that it's always 116 millimeters, and then you get some sort of consistency. But another way of doing it, now I've got that one in position here. I might want to copy that image and copy that to other pages. So I'm going to delete the boxes we had in and I'm going to copy the other image. And what it does, it copies it in place as I do that. And by copying it in place, it means I could then, if Ed had another image here, he'd be able to just drag that one in and they're always in the same position, the same setup. So if you double click on that image, you'll then find it's always 116 millimeters, always minus three, minus three to give us the bleed. So, uh, but obviously Ed might not want to be doing that. So I'm going to delete the images out because I don't want to muck about with his calendar too much. If I've done to work on those two months. So I'm going to go into one of my months where I'm going to copy the image, the blank picture box. I'm going to paste that into the other images so that Ed has a calendar as he left it before. Okay, and as you, and I'll just check that his background graphics are in the right place for the months, which they are. Uh, so hopefully this is a little little insights helps you on this particular calendar and design. If you see 2019 on the images, let me know. I'm normally around about May, June, because people normally January, February, March still order calendars for the same year. So they will still, we're in 2019, so they'll be ordering 2019 calendars in January, February, March. So I start updating all the dates to the next year, the 2020, round about May. And he's on S14. I've already done all the SO1s to SO9s, all the booklet calendars, spiral and, uh, and, and staple booklet calendars. I've done all the desk calendars. I've done all the kitchen calendars. I hadn't got round to S14. Uh, so I've done about 30, but I've still got this one, uh, S10 upwards to go, to S20 to go. So uh, now I see this job in, I will do that one and that will be live. And basically when we come to output it and when Ed next logs into this job, it will basically show the 2020 calendar months. So don't worry if you see 2019, it won't be a 2019 calendar uh, unless you want it to be. And then I'd need to deal with that. I can do different years and different months. I have all my, all these layouts, all my hundreds of layouts. I have back end in InDesign anyway. Okay, so hopefully this little insight has helped you uh, and we can and, and create your, your perfect calendar.